What is up guys, it's Hi Fan First and today I'm gonna be reviewing the hit TV show Power Season 3 Episode 3. Let's get it. Now, honestly it starts off weird. These two guys are robbing a corner store while one guy is robbing a corner store and the other guy's just like, Why are you doing this, bro? Why are you doing this? Like on some we're not supposed to be doing this stuff, right? And then it's crazy because I'm like, what the hell's going on? This am I am I watching power or I'm watching something else? So this cop pulls up and I'm like, Oh wait, I recognize this actress from, from somewhere. I think her name is uh, Anika Anika something. Um that's when it gets crazy because she comes in she comes in the store, sees the kid robbing the clerk, and then she tells that kid to put the gun down and it's crazy. They were actually in it all together. She tells the clerk. She tells him to shoot the clerk. I quote, "Shoot that motherfucker." <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck?" Oh shit, she a crooked cop, and that's cr that I'm like, "Whoa!" And then that's when it. That's when it makes sense. She was like, "It, it, it makes sense." So she shot the guy robbing the clerk to make it look like he shot the clerk, even though he just did, and he just and she just had to kill him. But she killed him because he was not really playing his role and what supposedly they were doing. So the other kid, the other g kid who's just like, oh, like, what's going on? Like, that kid, he's just like, relax. And he's like, what? come on, what's going on? And, you know, she just calmed him down and stuff. And I'm like, what the hell? And so basically, after that, it goes on the news. And it talks about how she's a like an eight-year veteran. Her name is Officer, well... Her, her, well, I'm not gonna say her name is, but her, her, I think her name is like G Club or that's her ghetto name. But like it's that Officer Garner. She's an eight year veteran, and this is where it introduces Kanan. So apparently Kanan has been sleeping over at her house. So it's like, whoa, okay. I don't know who's this. Probably I'm thinking that's Kanan's daughter or Kanan's sister or something. I'm like, okay, we're gonna find out later. So that's when we see Ghost and Angie running. You know, just jogging, and then you see Greg in the cut. Um, Greg didn't really get noticed, but it's like it's still apparent that Greg is stalking Angie or Ghost. So that all right. So net, a couple scenes later, because there's like I think a scene where Ghost is talking about business, and honestly, that business part of his life is so boring to me. I just rather not review it. It just comes to Holly, Tommy, and Tasha. So apparently. They um apparently they're working together from last from uh, um episode two. Uh, Tasha actually was like, you know what, y'all need help, y'all need me to count the bread and stuff, and you know to make it look legit because Tommy was not doing a good job at it, and I'm pretty sure Holly wanted to know about the game too, so you know it would make sense for Tasha to come in, and it's really great because Tasha's really doing her role in season three. So apparently they meet at Lala's shop where they plan to buy a lot of um, hair salons. And what, what I heard the funniest thing ever. What was it? It was uh like you're gonna be the we you're gonna be the McDonald's of weave. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's hilarious. And then it comes to this next scene where Julio and this Korean dom. I was like, shit, my nigga, Julio fucking that shit up. I'm thinking, uh, I guess something's going to happen with this scene. Maybe the Dom might turn on him. We don't know. It just it was just a little conversation. Probably something potential. We're going to find out during the rest of the season. Let's get it. All right. And then, oh, this is the part I was supposed to say. Um, Officer Garner has a lesbian girlfriend. And so, basically, she's a dyke or bisexual or whatever. And that's when she, like, that's when the lesbian girl try to, you know, get with Kane and try to, you know, jack him up. Like, not jack him up, like, like, you know, get him, like, stimulated. But that wasn't working because, you know, Kanan's a burnt up old man. He got beat by a ghost in season two last episode. He just got fucked up. And, you know, it's, it's really crazy how he just, like, I think he came from New York to Washington, D.C. Because, um, and he went to the hospital, too. Uh, but he's just really burnt. Like, if you see this guy right now, he just really looks fucked up. Like, he looks beyond effed up. And it's crazy. He got, like, burnt marks. And it's like, oh, that shit. It reminds me of a time where my friend, he, he actually got that. Because, um, I forgot what happened. I think pot, I think it was, a whole, like, you know how, like, you know, boil water in pot. And, it, like, a lot of it fell on his foot. And his foot was just so fucked up for, like, a good, like, a good couple of months. It's 
crazy. So basically, basically, Cannon kind of revealed the situation right there with um with Ghost to the les to her, uh, her lesbian girlfriend, but not really the per- the off not really Officer Garner. Officer Garner is gonna actually find out later in the episode what happened. So you know, Angie and um Tommy. I said Tommy. Angie and Jamie. Uh, I don't want to say Jamie. Angie and Ghost. They're actually just walking, talking, and then she, like, sees Greg from afar. So, this is where Angie confronts Greg. And this is where it gets a little bit, like, into the, to, like, a heated moment. Because she's, like, looking for a gun because she really feel like this guy's threatening her life. So, she realizes she can't find her gun. So, Greg is like, what are you looking for? You looking for your gun? And then that's when Angie realizes it's really not there. So, that's when it goes into another scene where Angie gets this call. Like, she's looking for her gun everywhere in the house. And then that's when she gets this call. And this is where the call... This is where this goes into the scene where, um... Ty... Ty I think it's before. my Excuse me. This is when the scene where Tyreek is, like, with his friend. She, he's just, like, showing him the gun. And she and he's like, oh, my God, bro. This shit look... Like, it's crazy. It's, it's real as fuck. You know, that's when they actually get caught by this um, security... No, by the PE coach... And that's where it really gets fucked up right there. So, basically, Tyreek took Ang- Angela's gun last episode. And is he his excuse was basically that since Sean got really messed up, he could get, like, shot up any time. And it's like, it doesn't make sense because he's, he's in a white school. He's in a private school and they're going to shoot him. Like, come on now. Like, I, like really? It's crazy. So, basically... So basically, this is where Tasha proves her boss instinct in season three. Like, like they said before, Tasha will be like the bad, like the boss bitch in season three, and she just proved that right then and there. She was like, like they were actually considering suspend, no, expelling Tyreek until Tasha came in with that. Oh, because he's black. Da 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 da. Oh, you didn't like when um when these other people were robbing, like were robbing um what. A vending machine, you didn't do nothing about that. Or oh, where those girls were beating up that girl with their six, you do nothing about that. And then da 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 And you know, that's when Tasha like end up saucing them. And then that's when she just end up playing her, bo- her boss bitch role in the whole episode. It's crazy. Like, Tasha is doing fucking right. So basically, at the, like, so, so far at the end where, um,. Ghost and when I said Ghost, Tasha and their son, they were in the living room and they were like discussing punishment. So basically, his son got cut a deal. He's gonna he's gonna end up being in school still, but he got to go to therapy for bringing a gun. You know, like that. It's gonna be basically those like white people sitting in the chair trying to figure out what's wrong with you. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. I haven't been in therapy. I don't need that. Uh, <laughs> Um, so basically, this is where I feel like Ghost kind of really is really losing his father edge because his Tyreek really like rebelled against Ghost. He was like, "No, I'm not giving you my phone." I'm like, "Damn, you really said that? My God, I'm like, damn, do you really know who the fuck you talking to? You talking to Ghost, your dad?" And it's like, this man is a murderer, the killer too. He's a cold blooded G, and you talking to him like that? I'm like, God damn, this nigga is fucking insane. Woo. So it just gets to a point where Tasha proves her boss bitch instinct again and just tells Tyree, give me your phone, gives it to Ghost, and basically that's just it. <laughs> Woo! Long episode. You know, and then that's when I'm Ghost and Angie. They're um, arguing because of Tyree getting a gun. So it basically shows that Angie was just really not ready for this parent role crap. He was, she was just not ready for that shit. Like, and it's just like wow. So um that's when Officer Garner, the female cop, she was in the she was at home and what's that kid name? Tur- Dirk was um with her and they were just discussing some big plan they have coming up to just get a lot of money and that's when fifty cents hearing this he's like, What the hell's going on? This kid sound like a op. So that's when 50 Cent came out. No, it was like, man, don't trust this kid, bruh. And that's when Turkey came with some, he came with a really savage line. I was like, oh, shit. Well, I got really look for it right now because it just got me like, 
Damn. Oh, you burnt like crisp. Wait, you burnt and crisp like pork rind. I was like, no, that's so fucking creep. I was like, nah, this kid is savage. Do you know who the fuck you're trying? You're trying Kanan, the ultimate drug lord. He old school. You're trying Kanan like that? Honestly, I was thinking that Kanan was finally going to come out of that cast and just fuck up this nigga, bro. But probably that's going to be for like next episode. I don't know. It might be crazy. Next episode, I could tell it's going to be crazy. I just want to see some action already. Like, we've been seeing so much action in the trailer, and it's just not getting there yet. And it's like, oh. <sighs> this basically. So, this is where Tommy pretty much, like, proves that he's, like, the best uncle in the world. Because he gets a text from Tyreek, and Ghost has Tyreek's phone. Keep that in mind. So, that's when Tommy was like, you know what, I gotta get... Oh, wait, excuse me. Holly is pregnant. Pause. Holly is pregnant. I said it. Holly is pregnant. That's when Tommy gets a text from Tyreek, and he's like, you know, I gotta go to Tyreek, man. That's my dog, man. I gotta go. I gotta go. And it's like, whoa, that's when Tommy really proves that he's just, like, really, like, he's just so loyal to Tyreek, even though, he, like, him and Ghost are just not at the same level like they used to be. But it just shows us he has still, he has a lot of love for Tyreek. It's crazy. So, basically, you know, they're talking, and it's like, okay, basically, actually, that's going to be at the end. So, that's when it comes to this other scene where this crazy Japanese kid cuts his pinky because apparently he was stealing from the Korean drug lord or Chinese. I don't see, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not trying to sound racist. Sometimes I don't know the same. I don't know what's the difference. Sometimes I ain't gonna lie. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I just don't know the difference sometimes. So yeah, basically. So Fifty Cent, finally Fifty Cent, Kanan, finally tells um Officer Garner the truth. About what happened. So apparently it makes sense now. Officer Garner is one of the people that 50 Cent actually like rescued. You know brought into the drug business. So basically she's just a savage. She's just been like raised. And like Kanan like, Kane basically knows her. I was thinking they're probably relatives or something. But I guess they're really not. Um, But yeah. Kanan basically knows her. Um, You know Kanan explained her what happened. That he killed Sean and stuff. And. Basically, she just knows her world throughout the whole episode. And that's when this whole thing ended with Ghost and Tommy talking. Now, Tommy was just so like, what the fuck? Why the fuck am I seeing you here? I want to see Tyreek. But, you know, ta- keep in mind, Tyreek is, is like, Tyreek is grounded. <laughs> Whew, sorry. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, Ghost is like... Wow, like Ghost is like Tommy was good. Not Tommy was good, but he she's like, yeah, Lobos is trying to kill me. What's up with that? Tommy's just like, what the fuck? Like Tommy just has that what the fuck face. Like, does he know I'm supposed to kill you or like? He he just had that face, and that's when T- Ghost asked Tommy, "Do you know if Lobos is after me?" And then that's when Tommy was like, "Goodbye, Ghost." And that's when the episode just ended. And it's like, whoa, this episode just. It's just getting to the best part. Like right now, I feel like I really should. I really should have watched Power. I wish I didn't know about Power, so I could actually like watch at the end because it's like, oh my god, this is really this is worth waiting a week, but it's not worth waiting a week at the same time. Basically, it's just crazy. This crazy ass episode. But honestly, guys, um, this was my review. This was just basically the brief review of Power on what's going on. Um, I'm gonna see you guys later. I'm gonna review episode four. Peace out.